Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Huracan aircraft. In the last video, we got most of the wing complete. In this video, we are going to install the landing gear in the one wing and we will be probably continuing with this ginormous fuselage. We're still waiting on the replacement lights from Ozero Custom and those should be back hopefully soon and that'll allow us to finish up the wings but we're not going to wait for that we're going to keep plugging away on the aircraft so thank you for tuning in don't forget to give the video a thumbs up uh, hit that subscribe button down below if you have not done so already it's free to do it so hang tight and we will continue on with the wings All right, so mounting the gear is fairly straightforward. Basically just get the gear temporarily set up so you can cycle it with the controller and your radio or the manual controller you can buy and get it nice and centered in the wheel well. Uh, there's a little bit of a bump out thing here that kind of follows the strut. Uh, I just trim that off with my X-Acto blade because it was getting in contact with the spring there. Uh, no big deal, you'd never notice unless you're looking for it. Um, it only was uh, coming out a couple millimeters. So, uh, But anyways, basically just get it in the right spot and uh, use your appropriate fastening system. All right guys, so the last video we did a light giveaway for a Sky Candy set of landing lights, and we are now going to pick a winner. All right, so we got the camera positioned here, um, and we will go to pick a winner. Kazama624, there we go, buddy. So send me an email. Uh, the lighter side of RC at gmail.com. Reach out to me and uh, let's connect, and I will organize getting those sent to you. Congratulations, you're the winner of a Sky Candy set of landing lights with a digital switch. So, for this gear, I'm going to use blind nuts just like we did on the front gear, and I'm just going to play with this a little bit more. And then, once I'm happy with it, I will uh, get those holes drilled and uh, get the gear installed on this side. All right, so I've opted against using the blind nuts on the gear. Uh, reason primarily is because we've got three layers, I think of three eighths or quarter inch ply, and uh, we'd only be grabbing about a third of the blind nut. So we'd only be grabbing, we'd only be grabbing, yeah, maybe about half the blind nut which uh, isn't very good. So uh, what I'm gonna do is what I usually do, which is drill and tap the plywood. So we've got three layers of good quality plywood. We've got almost the entire bolt going into the plywood except what's uh, raised up above the gear. So we've used a, a drill bit. I'm not sure what size that is, but anyways, there's a comparison for you. So we've used a drill bit to drill all the holes, and then we're using an appropriate tap. Uh, it's an M5 by 0 .08, 0 0.8, and uh, that's the matching thread to the, uh, the bolts. So all we do is drill a hole, and then we just take the tap and thread it all the way in there, and it goes in quite nicely. So once we've threaded it all the way in, I'll pull it back out. I put some CA inside the hole on the threads, and then I thread the bolt in, take the bolt out, put some CA on there again, and we've got basically threads through all three layers of ply. All right, so that's been bolted down, and uh, if you're looking at this now and you're questioning this method, uh, this is used by many people, and I would trust putting threads in all three layers of those wood, or that wood, versus having 
uh, half of the blind nut held on. So uh, those are extremely accurate when they're done up and uh, works out very, very well. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the gear. We will install the leg. Just had the bolt lightly done up there so it wouldn't turn so easy. And now we'll check our fit. Awesome, so easy for, me to, easy for me to see, but basically as we're coming in and out of this hole here, uh, it has nice spacing all around it. Beautiful. So that is done. All right guys, so just a little point here for you. The root of the wing is not level on the fuselage. So it is at the leading edge here, or the leading edge there. It's actually angled in a little bit. So I'll give you a different perspective here. So it's, yeah, it's not straight forward and backwards. It actually has some natural toe in. So what that means for us setting up this wheel is we always want some toe in on our wheels, just a couple degrees but this root of the wing already naturally has a couple degrees of toe in in it. So what we do guys is basically measure in at a certain point here from the root of the wing. So we've gone in 11 inches, marked a mark somewhere close to the gear, which is why we came up with 11 inches. Go to the other side, measure 11 inches, come in, make our mark. All right, now what we can do is we can get the wheel installed, put a straight edge like a carbon rod. This is gonna be a little bit hard to show you guys, but basically what you're doing is you're putting your straight edge there and you can use that straight edge to mark or line it up with your marks. So as long as we're following those marks, we're gonna naturally have a couple degrees of toe in, right? That would be towed out, that would be far too much toe in. So that helps us get our wheels lined up and uh, with a couple degrees of toe in, it's gonna track nice and straight. So then once we've got our position fixed, we wanna add some flat spots to the pin. So we're gonna do the base of the pin that's in the trunnion first. So what you can do with these pins is if you take them out, and then what we can do is you just take your Sharpie, and I've already done, to, done it to this one, but you basically draw on the end that's gonna make contact with the pin. Thread this back in. If you tighten it up nice and tight, it's maybe hard to see on camera, but uh, right there, it's not super obvious, but you can see where the marker has left a mark on the pin, and that tells us where we can make our flat spot to get that all lined up. Now on the base, it's not super critical because that we can just get it positioned anywhere. But once we start working on the leg, then that angle becomes quite critical. All right, guys, so there is our flat spots on both sides. They don't need to be very excessive, just tiny little flat spots. And we use our Dremel sanding disc to make those. So what I found actually works nice too is the white paint marker. Instead of the Sharpie marker, it shows up better. Uh, so that's that step done. So now what we'll do is we'll put this back in the gear and then we'll do the gear side of those bolts and pin, which is gonna be far more critical than the other side. All right, so now we are ready to do the gear side. You can see here what the bolts look like once they've got the little paint marker on them. So we've threaded all those in, taken them back out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this leg off and hopefully our marks are still there. All right, so that is such an accurate fit that we needed to heat up the leg to get it off, but we can still, hopefully I can pick this up for you guys. Can still see our marks there. I'm not sure if they're gonna show up on camera, but anyway, so now we'll take our Dremel and we will uh, sand little flat spots on there and we'll get our leg reinstalled. 
All right, gears installed and everything worked out good. So our angle stayed good, nice and happy with that. Uh, we had to do a little bit of filing on the inside of this leg. There was kind of a burr in there. Once we filed that down and put some lubricant on there, it worked out good. Obviously Loctiting all the screws and we used a zip tie right there to hold the brake line. A zip tie holding the snake skin on the base of the brake line. And then of course we're plugged into the connector. We will put a little bit of shoe goop on that connector as well. And then we just use some electrical tape on the base here, color coded, because my beautiful daughter bought me some colored stuff for uh, Christmas last year. So what we do in this case with the brake line is leave that snake skin too long. So we want that to be long because we want it to stay down in this area when the gear is up. Uh, if you have this cut too short, it's going to create a catching point. So now when the gear extends and if the snake skin's too short, it's going to catch on stuff and bunch up. You want this to flow nicely in behind the gear. That's the whole point of using the snake skin and of course protecting the wire as well. So this right wing is complete with the gear install. She's done. So now what we get to do is we're gonna leave the covers off until we get the uh, light back to install the light. Uh, we're gonna leave the aileron cover off just because. And the only other thing we need to do is to hook up the brake and gear wires to the appropriate uh, ash lock connector. All right guys, it's actually been a, almost two weeks, I think, since that last clip of the Huracan build was recorded. And we've been full on in house building mode, been going crazy. That's all on my other channel. If you're interested, it's kind of boring stuff compared to cool aircraft. But uh, yeah, we've been in full on house building mode, uh, trying to get our occupancy. So where we can actually move in officially and live in the house for uh, the 14th. And today is the ninth so it's been busy but things are starting to get uh closer and we are back into building mode now so before we dive back into the huracan i'm going to share with you guys something that my friend ted sent me all right guys so i got this wonderful package i've already opened it I got this wonderful package in the mail yesterday and i just want to share with you guys um, what's in this package. It is very, very cool. So Ted Gillespie, there's his contact information. He comes to most of our local events and does an amazing amount of photography. Ted contacted me and asked me for my address and I gave it to him and lo and behold, this beautiful piece arrived along with some other ones. So this is a photo uh, photograph of my tutor that Ted took, um, I think earlier this year, and he got it mounted on this cool piece of aluminum. So very, very slick. Uh, absolutely amazing photographer. So Ted comes out to these events and for the couple of years that I've known him, he will take photographs of all of our jets and planes and everything at these events, put them on uh, one of his share websites and people just go on there and download them, um, which is super cool. But Ted needs to be Renumerated, is that the right word? I don't know. He needs to be paid for what he does because he does amazing work and he sits down and spends hours and hours and hours putting these things together. So let's take a look at these other pictures and we'll talk more about uh, what Ted does. All right, so he also sent me a picture of the diamond. Oh man, does that ever look good. Look at that smoke trail. Oh, that's a cool one as well too. If you watch my intro, you'll recognize that picture. <laughs> Another shot of the diamond, that one's awesome too. Very nice. And then we've got a couple smaller ones here as well. Oh, that's the smaller version of the diamond. Oh, these are all the smaller pictures. Oh, oh, there we go. See, I do fly prop planes sometimes. And uh, oh, that's another good one with the sky candy lights. So very cool. Thank you, Ted, for sending that stuff. Let's talk about uh, how we can help Ted out. 
All right, so this is a little bit more geared towards the local guys, but honestly guys, if you want some pictures of some amazing aircraft and you're just into that kind of thing, go visit Ted's website. I'll post it on the screen here, but all the links to everything will be posted down below. So at the end of this video, go check out Ted's website. So on the site, you can view all the photos and you can get up to 10 free downloads of social media quality pictures, which are still amazing. If you really like an image, you can download a high quality version of the image or have prints made like these ones for a small fee. There's also options if you order a, a larger pack of reduced rates as well. So there's also options for the metal print, like my Snowbird one there, or on canvas as well too. Um, obviously they're a little bit more than just getting the prints made, but a very, very cool piece. So he uses a local uh, professional printing quality service as well too. So if you order from Ted's website, you're also supporting local as well. And there's also a promo code for you guys. So if you use the promo code LSRC, the lighter side of RC, LSRC, you'll get a 10% discount on your first order over $20. Local guys, or if you're just into the hobby and love good pictures, please support Ted. Um, he invests a lot of time and money into his equipment and a lot of time to photograph our aircraft. Um, so if you're interested in some pictures of your aircraft, check out Ted's link down below. Thank you, Ted, for those pictures and for the gifts. I really appreciate it. Very cool stuff. I am really looking forward to hanging this kind of stuff in my new shop in the trailer, just cool places. All right guys, we are back working on the Huracan, so that needs to get there. That, there. Fortunately, it's massive, but it's really light, so let's move that over. All right, so in staying with focusing on the gear, what I'm gonna do next is get the front gear linkage set up for the door. So we've got our servo mounted there, we've got our mount on the door down here there's a different perspective of what i did so as i talked about before i just took a piece of a helicopter frame a 450 series and mounted it on the door so that's what we are going to be using and we just need to set up the linkage and everything for that so i'm going to kind of figure that out and i'll show you guys my process all right so here's pretty much what i've come up with now we're going to use these Seacraft arms. They are definitely good for something like this, not good for any big surfaces, that's for sure. Uh, we've got these metal ball joints. I believe these are from a CARF kit. And we've got a three millimeter threaded rod. So these are a metric size. And I've got the Sullivan Golden Clevis. Obviously it's silver, but I didn't know this up until uh, a few months back that Sullivan makes metric clevises. So anyways, we've got this nice setup. Uh, it actually works out well because the ball joint gives us a little bit of movement there, but the mounting plate that I put on the door is pretty much right in line with this whole setup, so it should work great. Now we're just gotta get the, uh, the length adjusted, so we've got a little bit of play there, and we'll drill a hole in that piece of carbon mounted to the gear door and we'll see how this all fits. Now, if you're not familiar with this, uh, the Electron GS200 control unit, uh, you've got linkage or uh, limit adjustments in the unit for your doors. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the, the setup's actually very easy. We'll go through this and I'll show you guys how, how that's done. All right, so the Seacraft arm, this is the 19 millimeter one, actually isn't long enough. We need to use a one inch arm. So I have a JR arm and that's what I've installed. And you can see it there. So all I've done in this case is basically mock everything up. So I've drilled a hole through that door uh, hinge point and we are, looks like, all set up quite well. So the servo isn't quite fully extended so we don't quite have a straight linkage there. And when we close it, it is almost horizontal. So we're in the right ballpark. Now what we'll do is we will get this uh, kind of plugged into the controller and finalize our positioning of that servo and working with the controller. 
All right guys, so we've powered everything up here and now we're going to adjust that servo. So we'll just put an arm on so we can see what's happening. We're not going to attach the linkage yet, but I'll show you what it looks like in the GS200. So everything's powered on. We go into the setup menu, into servos, and then basically you've got your multiple servos, right? So you can cycle through them and you've got eight servos on this controller. So, and then you just adjust your open and close position. So our open position is where we're adjusting right now. And then our close position. And as soon as we do that, the servo moves. So we're basically just going to hook the linkage up and adjust the open and close position so it works well with the door. I'll get this in the wheelhouse before I hook the linkage up and then we'll hook the linkage up and make fine adjustments. All right, so one of the uh, things you really wanna focus on here with the linkage is just angles. So I actually made the shaft of the linkage longer so that the servo arms kind of pointed at about uh, one o'clock um, if you're referencing the servo itself. So if this is straight up, Right now in the closed position, the servo arm is sitting about 1.30, 1 o'clock, something like that. And the reason for that is if you have the servo arm sitting at 3 o'clock, it actually pushes this linkage out and the door is able to open a little bit. Probably not an issue, but just works better uh, mechanically if you, uh, if you work on that. So now if I pull on the door, uh, I can't get the door open. So anyways, that is what the door looks like closed. And that's the sequence right there. Here's a view from the front. Now closing, it takes a little bit longer because all the gear are not connected. So right now the controller is waiting for the other gear to close, but there's no gear. So normally that would go a lot quicker, but here's the opening sequence here. There we go. So obviously you can play with all those um, times and everything on the gear controller. I'll give you guys a brief rundown here of how that all works in case you don't know. So when you're looking at the controller, basically go into setup, we're gonna go into sequence. Now, if you think about this as steps, okay? So this is the gear up condition. When we go to step number two, so when we initiate gear down, this is what happens. So it's the same kind of uh, theory as the Zykoi sequencer. Now you've got a whole bunch of steps here all the way to gear down, okay? So there's a bunch of steps there. But if you go to the gear up condition, door number one, which is the only one we're using, is closed. And then we go to step number one. We have a 0.2 second delay on everything. Um, everything is, all the gear is still up, but that door opens, okay? And then we just go through the steps and then by step number five, the right gear comes down first. Step number six, the nose comes down. Step number seven, left, all the way to gear down position. So pretty simple to play with the sequencer and uh, figure that out. As far as the servos go, I already showed you how to adjust that. But if you go to number one, you can adjust the open and close position by percentages so it can be nice and accurate. So that is everything for the front gear. Now I did mount my servo lead here, my female servo lead to the front former. I was gonna glue it in place and I kind of did, did a combination here. So I actually drilled two holes beside the servo connector, put some shoe goop on there and used a zip tie to hold it in place. You can see the back side there, the zip tie is there. So that's also nice and accurate. I'll bring the gear up here to show you. So all the excess just makes its own nice loop. Just like that, so nice and clean, 
We don't have that attached to anything further and just a nice simple setup. So I made the servo lead too long as it's got to go all the way back to this section when the gear controller is installed. All right, so next thing I'm going to do here, a quick little thing is do our vent line. Now I am using 8 millimeter Festo for this. Uh, reason I'm using Festo instead of Tigon, I usually I would use Tigon in this situation, but uh, we may, depending on performance, put a 300 in, in here. We'll see. But uh, I'm just running this uh, piece of Festo. Now I know a lot of people talk about doing a big loop. Um, I'm not going to do that. I always use a taxi tank. So anyways, uh, we're just going to run this, that piece right there. It's going to come directly down. We're going to put it right here, kind of at the root of the wing. And we've got our DreamWorks fitting that's going to go right there. I like to put my taxi tank plug on the right-hand side of the plane. Well, sorry, the left-hand side of the plane. This is the side I always stand on when I'm starting. Uh, reason for that is I can plug my taxi tank in and the tank sits right on top of the wing. So it's just a nice uh, position right there, nice and simple. And uh, this also uh, is easy access right there. So all I'll do in this case, I just take my Align reamer tool and basically just put a nice hole in there. And then what I'll do is take a piece of plywood that uh, this fits into, also doing that same hole. Put that on the inside of the fuselage just to give this a little bit more support and tighten the nut up. So pretty simple, uh, simple process, but I'm gonna do the hole, get the plywood ready and get that piece installed. All right, so we've got our hole done. We've got our fitting inserted, uh, mixed up some five minute high saw, came up with my backing piece. So this goes on the inside of the fuselage and then our nut goes on top of this. So all I'll do is I'm just gonna put some five minute high saw on the back side of this just so it bonds to the fuselage and takes up uh, any angles because this is sitting on an angle right here in this area. And then we'll just tighten the nut down and our vent fitting will be complete. All right, and there is the vent line, nice and clean and simple and short. So no breathability issues on this one because it is massive tubing, a nice short length and we're good to go with the vent line. Tank still isn't fully bolted in, but uh, I think we can do that fairly quickly here. But uh, that is one more step done. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we need to install a power switch uh, for the lights. Well, I don't need to, but that's how I prefer to do it. So we're just using a standard uh, rocker switch. This one's illuminated and it's got three poles on it. So when you're wiring something like this, your negative goes to the gold colored pole, your positive goes to the middle pole, and then your power going to your thing you're powering comes off this third pole. So when you switch this on, the light switch or the light, the lit up switch is illuminated, and then now you've got power coming down that third lead. So pretty simple to set up. So you're gonna have your battery leads coming to here. The negative is gonna go up. The positive is gonna go up. You're gonna have another negative coming off. And then this one's gonna come off and go to the light system. So the alternative to this with the light system is you could just unplug the battery. Uh, the problem is that it's not as easy as just flicking a switch. So that's why I prefer to use a switch. Uh, the Sky Candy landing lights use digital switches and if you don't turn the power off um, before you turn your receiver off, you can burn those digital switches out. So um, I'm just gonna get this installed right in this area. The main former here, that one, comes up to about here, so we've got room there to install that. So that's the next thing I'm gonna get done is just uh, get that light switch installed. So what I'll do here first is I will measure this out and make a template. Uh, it's a nice fit, it's just gonna squish in there and friction fit uh, itself. And then what I'll do is I'll, before I install it, I'll come up with my wiring harness here and uh, get that installed. And I think this is a great time to give a shout out to 
all of you guys that have pitched in to support the new shop build. So if you didn't hear or haven't seen any of the recent videos, we are crowdfunding a, uh, the shop build um, for the lighter side of RC. And thank you to all you guys that have already donated to the shop build. It's very, very appreciated. Uh, thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, it's amazing to see people just pitch in and uh, love it. So thank you guys sincerely uh, for all your support and your help. All right, and you can see on the card there, this is just the back plate for the switch. So it says mounting hole size inch and an eighth by half inch. So we drew an inch and an eighth by half inch rectangle. We'll cut that out with an X-Acto knife and that will be our mounting template. So we can get that lined up. I want to be fairly close to that piece of wood, the former, and uh, just nicely spaced uh, on the plate. All right, so we've just taken the template, transferred it onto here. The wood former is sitting about there, so we've got some room, and it's just nicely spaced to line up with the uh, the receiver there. So um, nice symmetry going on. So, anyways, now what I'll do is I'm just going to cut this out with an Exacto knife, and then the switch will be ready to install, and then we'll work on the wiring for the switch. All right, and it is tip time for you guys. So I'll show you this episode's tip. So a lot of the new planes, uh, when they do their fiberglass layups, they're fiberglass and then they've got a layer of foam uh, built in to the layup. So that's the, the I don't know, the, the beigey, browny type yellow stuff that you see in the layup here. So most manufacturers will do this. So when you make a cutout like this, what happens is you've got a nice thin layer of fiberglass, but it's not very durable, especially for something like this rocker switch, which uses friction to hold it in place. So what you do in this case is you do your cutout and then you just take some thin CA and wick it into the foam right here. And that adds quite a bit of structural stability or durability to this opening. Prior to doing this, that was pretty flexible, and I just wicked a bunch of CA into this area, and uh, it's already stiffened this up nicely, and it's gonna make this edge quite a bit more durable for that rocker switch being installed. This tip time has been brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. So as we talked about before, when I opened up these lights uh, Sal from Sky Candy Landing Lights. He gets everything plug and play, wire ready. So these guys here are for each of the wings. So we've got the connector that's feeding the power to the wings. And then we've got the double connector here, which goes to the landing lights and the leading edge of the wings. So each one of those guys goes for the wings. This is the main wiring harness here. And the reason I'm pulling this out is because this is our battery connection. So whatever we do with the switch, this is what we're hooking up with the four cell LiPo and then everything else runs or feeds off of this stuff here. All right guys, and that is gonna be everything for this video. We're gonna stop just before we get the, uh, the lighting system wired. So hopefully in the next video, we have the lights back. They have been adjusted, uh, Ozero Custom redesigned them for the Huracan wing, and they should be awesome. So they should be shipped back uh, two days after this video airs, and we're just waiting for them. So they may be in the next video, or they may be in the final video, but Regardless, we are plugging forward with this aircraft. We are getting very close. So in the next episode, we'll continue with the fuselage until those lights show up. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. It's free to do so. Give the video a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next video.